everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with another new collection by Spellbinders, and it is actually by Yana. I will be using two of these products. The one is called Anemones, and the other one is called the Anemones Glimmer Blooms. And yes, I cannot pronounce that because it's, it's just one of those words. Um, she has come up with a new collection called Anemone Blooms Collection, um, and it's very similar to her first collection uh, that she created, uh, just simply titled Blooms, um, and they are very interchangeable, and you will see that. So the Glimmer uh, plate comes with a sentiment uh, similar to her others in the original collection, and I will be interchanging I will be pulling items from that collection into these images. And we're going to make two cards. Um, these two images are very similar. Uh, of course, one is die cutting and one is glimmer. Now, they are different sizes and there are small differences to this. The foil that I'm going to use is gold. And I'm going to set this down and I'm putting this onto a piece of watercolor paper. This is Canson XL watercolor paper. Um, and it does foil absolutely gorgeous. Now I also have my backdrops. So with each of these, whether it's the die set or the glimmer, you have the, what I'm going to call the outline die, where you can have the solid shape cut out as well. And then you can place once you glimmer or once you die cut, you can place that outliner around it as well to cut out the image that you're going to have. This is how I'm going to add my dimension to my piece. I've cut this from heavyweight cardstock and just layered that together. Now again, remember I said we're going to make two different cards. So you're going to see two different um, techniques. This one we're going to watercolor. I've pulled out my Altenew uh, watercolor pan. Uh, this was their first one that came out. Um, I like this because it does have a soft tone to it. And there is just a little bit of a chalky feel, which I do like. So our first set for our glimmers, we are going to, as you can see, watercolor these flowers. I have, I'm going to be using the pinks. In this and it's actually only two different shades and pretty much I'm going to let the the watercolors themselves do the work so when I put them in um, I will dab some of that color off just to make it lighter but since I have that as the base the color will move when I drop in some darker colors you'll also find that if I feel that I've put down too much color um, I can lift it up with my brush, with my clean brush. Um, just closing, just cleaning that off in the water um, to get those different variegated looks. You can make your flowers any color that you want. My favorite color with this uh, floral is the, uh, it's like a deep periwinkle blue um, with the black, almost black center. Um, they are my favorite. Um, but we can make our colors, our flowers, any color that we want. So I'm just going to continue through to color this in. I am going to keep all of this in. And once we are done, we will continue with our video. I'll be right back.
Now that we're done the watercoloring, that's what that looks like. The only thing that I'm going to put in next is just the dark center. I am going to use the black um, to do that because they do have a very deep, rich black center to them. I'm going to set that aside to dry and now we're going to start on our next technique. So we're going to pull in our colored pencils. Now the color pencils that I am using um, are actually by Arteza and I just sh chose those shades of blue. Um, so it's going to make it look like that periwinkle uh, blue, but I do want to highlight on the tips. So I'm making sure that that top part has a lot of the white. I am doing a very basic blend here with two colors. And you can see I finally zoomed in. Could you see? So you can see this. Um, I'm putting the darkest color um, down and then I'm coming over it to blend it out over the lightest color. Now, the paper that I'm using here is usually not a paper that I use. This is actually Nina Solar White. Not really a fan of using colored pencils on this paper because it is smooth. Remember, with colored pencils, you need to have a tooth to your paper. So water paper, watercolor paper is great. Um, I My favorite is the Sanford Mixed Media uh, papers. They're nice and thick and they make these pencils blend and it doesn't feel like it has a tooth. Um, that is just so wonderful about it. So you can see I'm going to continue through, do the same thing once again. One, I'm putting my darkest color first and then I'm going to come in with my lightest color and just blend out that edge so that it's not a hard, hard edge. I'm going to turn on some music again and I will be back once we are done. So now that we're done coloring our image, we are going to, I put tape on the back. So while we're manipulating this around, we're holding those pieces in. I don't want those to fall out. I want this to be my base. Um, I was going to do a double layer. So I did cut this out in white as well, but we're not going to use that. I do have our cloud panel cut multiple times, and that's what we're going to use to create dimension onto our card. And I have cut this out out of the gold mirror cardstock uh, from Spellbinders. And I am going to set that over this piece that we've colored. So you can see the leaves have gone, will be gold. Um, and then the outline of the flowers will be gold as well. So I think with the colors um, that we used, um, it does create um, a beautiful floral image. I'm going to use my liquid glue um, to put this on. And remember, when you have an intricate die like this, you want to make sure that you use uh, dots, dots of glue. Um, this way you're using less, of course, and then also it's not going to uh, squish out the sides. Um, but don't remember, don't forget, you know, the glue that we use um, is does also dry clear, so no one's going to notice going to place my panels on top of our uh, chipboard pieces that we have created. And then the sentiment that I used comes from the glimmer set from this collection. And I am going to use that for both cards. So for one card, I'm going to use all cardstock and for, and that's for the pink card. And for the uh, bluish anemones, I'm going to use the gold to accent the sentiment. And here you can see I'm putting that together. And I love the fact that we don't have a separate dot for the eye. Yes, that is an awesome thing. I'm going to put the last one together. I am doubling up what I call the cloud. 
um, and then I'm only going to have one layer for the color part of the sentiment. So I chose a pink for this one. And then I'm going to be pulling some items out from her first collection, uh, Yana's Bloom. And I'm going to choose the use it use that collection for the backgrounds. So for the watercolor flowers, the one right here, you can see I'm putting this on a piece of pink cardstock, and that is the diagonal glimmer strips. So I'm going to glimmer that, and then this one here for the blue, I'm going to be using the splatter sentiments. Um, now this came with a frame um, sentiments and also those gorgeous splatters um, so we don't have to you know we can create our own snowstorm and foil yes um, so I'm going to be playing around with that um, and getting those set in place I'm just looking at with this frame and then that that focal piece sitting in the center what these splatters are going to look like so I'm trying to uh, save them um, or to try to think of where they could sit so that it doesn't take away from that Again, using the gold foil, we're just going to glimmer all of our pieces together. Now, what's great, because this frame is open, uh, we'll be able to use the insides. I do save my scraps. I put them into a little tiny uh, bowl with a lid, a plastic container. And when I need that strip for that sentiment or anything else, that's when I'll pull out that piece of foil. But this foil does last for an extremely long time. Um, I'm still on my original uh, rolls. So we're going to take our pink panel. And of course, I, you know, I use my <laughs> tape runner and it stops working. We'll fix that later. So you can see these beautiful stripes going across. We're going to place that pink flower right on top. And then we're going to take our sentiment and put that up above this image. And we're actually going to have that wrap around our floral image. So here are the splatters. I absolutely love those glimmer plates. There are the splatters. It's okay that some of them will be on the um, underneath the floral image. I'm going to take my panel. These are standard A2 size card bases. And what's funny is this just worked out to be a pink card and a blue card. I didn't plan that. <laughs> We're going to glue down our image. And I'm sorry, I did not add dimension to this one. I kept that one flat. My bad. Going to set that down make sure that lays flat and then we're going to take our sentiment and i'm playing around with the location i am going to put it across the bottom leaves and that in itself will add some um, interest to the card as well i do tend to hold my pieces in place um, instead of using an acrylic block and i've never had an issue so here are our two cards. They did, it looks like they have curved and they did. And that is because of all of the glue that we used on that focal point. Um, it's a large area. So sometimes that will cause the paper to curl as it dries, but it will, but it does and it will dry flat. Same thing with this one. I just love the two different colors. I did add some gems uh, to the blue and I added some pearls to the pink. So I do hope you enjoyed uh, the projects that we created today featuring Yana's Anemone Blooms collection. It is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful collection. As always, I will have the links to all the products that I used and to the collection itself down below in the video description. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below as well. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't yet, I'd love for you to subscribe, hit that thumbs up. And remember, what is always most important to me, always be creative, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Till then.